Now the inverse function takes elements of the range and maps them back into the elements of the domain. So let's take a very straightforward function. Let's say fx equals x plus 3. We've got the domain here and the range here. And maybe the domain is any real number. For example, minus 2, 4 and 7. Then obviously uh, adding 3, we get 1, get 7, we get 10. So if the function is fx uh, is x plus 3, then the inverse function is obviously going to be f inverse fx is x minus 3. So 1, 7, 10 becomes minus 2, 4 and 7. So this is now the domain and this is now the range of the inverse function. So you get a rather gobbledygook sentence which makes sense if you look at the diagram but may not make sense if you actually say it or even write it down. And the gobbledygook sentence is that the domain of the inverse function is the same as the range of the normal function. And the range of the inverse function is the same as the domain of the normal function. In other words, those two are equal. The domain of the normal function is the range of the inverse function. And these two are equal. The range of the normal function is the domain of the inverse function. Sounds like a gobbledygook sentence, but this diagram, I hope, makes it fairly clear what's happening. Here we've got another function, fx is 3x plus 2. Let's say x is any real number. What is the inverse function? Well, the simple, simplest way of doing this, in my opinion, is to say let y equal 3x plus 2. So y is the range, x is the domain. So let's make x the subject. So because the domain of the inverse function is the range of the normal function and vice versa, the inverse function here is where the x and the y swap over. So we get x minus 2 over 3. That's because the domain of the normal function is the range of the inverse function and the range of the normal function is the domain of the inverse function. So by simply simple uh, writing y equal to 3x plus 2 and then making x the subject, we end up with the inverse function. Now we're going to look at a, at a new sort of function, which is the modulus function. So fx is the modulus of x, and this simply means it's the positive numerical value. The modulus of 7 is the positive numerical value. The modulus of minus 7 is the positive numerical value. The modulus of minus 412 is just 412. The modulus of 7206 is just 7206. So let's consider the function mod x and think about the graph of that. So if we draw a little diagram, x there and y here, or fx here, then this is going to be the domain. So let's say x can belong to the set of any real numbers, and uh, the y numbers are the range. So let's take, for example, the modulus of 1, that's 1. The modulus of 2 is 2. The modulus of 3 is 3. The modulus of 2.5 is 2.5. So this part of the graph just looks like that. The modulus of minus 1 is 1. Minus 2 is 2. So this is now the graph of fx equals mod x. Let's take the function fx is mod of 3x plus 2. I think about the graph of this. So here's x, here's fx. We'll say the domain is the set of any real numbers. 
Now the graph of uh, fx equals 3x plus 2 without the mod signs in is simply that. It goes to the point 0, 2 and uh, it's got gradient 3. But we haven't got this, we haven't got that one. It's not that, it's mod of 3x plus 2. So when we get down to these numbers here, uh, for example when x is minus 2, then when we put minus 2 into here, minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. So when we put minus 2 in here, we get minus 4, but we're taking the positive value of that. So instead of it being uh, down here, it's going to be up here. If we take x equals minus 10, here we'd get minus 28, but because we're taking the positive numerical value, we get plus 28. So instead of being down at minus 28, it's up at 28. So the graph of y equals mod 3x plus 2 for positive values it's going to be the same, but for negative values it's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. So this red line is the graph of y equals mod 3x plus 2. Notice that the negative values here are reflected in the x-axis. It's not true to say it's just a reflection in the x-axis because this part is not reflected. This part doesn't go down here, so the positive values stay the same, the negative values get reflected. So to generalise for this, if we've got y equals uh, f of x, and it looks like this, then the graph of y equals mod f of x is the same graph but is reflected, the negative parts are reflected in the um, x-axis. Not the best diagram I've ever drawn, but hopefully you get the idea. Now we're going to take the function fx equals um, the modulus of x minus 2. That's not the same as mod x minus 2. They're different. So let's think about how this works. Let's just take a few values. x, fx, let's take minus 5, let's take minus 2, let's take 0, let's take 2, let's take 5. So the modulus of 5 is 5, 5 take away 2 is 3. The modulus of 2 is 2, 2 take away 2 is 0. The modulus of 0 is 0, 0 take away 2 is minus 2. The modulus of minus 2 is 2, 2 take away 2 is 0. The modulus of minus 5 is 5, 5 take away 2 is 3. So if we draw this, x, f, x, uh, we've got 5, 3. We've got 2 naught, we've got 0 minus 2, we've got minus 2 naught, and we've got 5 minus 3. So the graph looks like this. So all the negative values of x have the same answer as the positive values of x. That's because when we take the modulus of a negative number, it's the same answer as the positive number. So well, now we've got mod x and then take away 2. So the graph is similar to the graph of y equals x minus 2, which is that. It's simply that the negative values of x are reflected in the y-axis. So let's generalise for uh, the graph y equals f of mod x. And let's see what happens. Supposing um, y equals f of x looks like this. Then the graph of y equals mod f of x is going to be, for positive values of x, it's going to be the same. But for negative values of x, it's going to be a reflection in the y-axis. It's not a very good reflection, but anyway, uh, what I'm 
I'm trying to do here is show that this part here is the reflection of this part here.